Lee. Um, I'm the executive partner of the Partnership for International Birding. And uh, with us today is Mandy Talpas. Um, and we're going to start right at the o'clock at both Hawaii and wherever else you are, unless you're in Indian it's 30. Um, Mandy, what time do you have, my, my friend? I have 8 o'clock. I gotta go get a call. What? I have 8 o'clock. Okay, we're, we're going to start. So, welcome to the uh, video conference on Hawaiian birding today. Um, with us today is Mandy Taalpas from Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm Charles Thornton Colby. I'm the executive partner of the Park Partnership for International Birding. Um, I'm just going to start with a four minute introduction. Two minutes of that time will be sort of lay down the ground rules of the call. And another two minutes will be to say nice things about Mandy as I introduce her. Um, and that's Mandy in the, with a nice background today, which is actual, her, her actual backyard with <laughs> minor birds and house benches. <laughs> Okay, um, so the ground rules for the call are pretty simple. We, we do like people to participate and ask questions. Um, please don't discourage participants um, from asking questions. If it gets unruly like the presidential debate, I, I will be a strong moderator and uh, quiet any unruliness. But um, generally, birders are a pretty polite lot and know how to be quiet to the area and be quiet on a Zoom call, but we, but we do invite questions. Um, so feel free to keep your mic open as long as there's not a lot of background noise and feel free to ask quest questions, they are welcome. Um, and if for some reason you can't get in on the video section of the Zoom call, you can text the question in and um, we will upload those questions as well and get them to me. And, um, so just um, a quick introduction of the call. Mandy's going to cover her favorite sites in Hawaii today. I don't think she'll get them all in, but I bet you she covers all three islands today. See if I can name them. Kauai, Oahu, uh, I. and the big island also known as Hawaii. I, 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 not bad for Rook, who is working to remember some geography here. Um, so uh, Mandy has been a birder for 25 years. She's been a professional bird guide for less than a decade, but she's truly become the top bird guide in Hawaii. Um, she has a bachelor's of science degree in environmental science from East Strasburg University. Um, and she's also done some pre-graduate work at the Villanova Ova University as well. Um, she's worked for a stack of bird conservation org for organizations um, including the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Saint Center and Pacific Rim Conservation in, in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Um, she even volunteers her time in conservation, conservation projects for birds. Um, and, uh, oh, I have here, you've been a professional bird guide for more than 15 years. Man, I unaged you, my, my friend. Um, and she truly leads most Hawaiian bird tours for, for major bird tour companies um, based in the United States and around the world. Um, and truly, kind of on the nice side of Mandy, um, our customers just love, love her as a guy. She just does a great job of taking care of people. Um, and her enthusiasm for birding is pretty much contagious. Um, so with no further ado, Mandy, you can begin. Oh, and as she gets through a geographical area, like when we're on flights between islands, we'll take a break for questions. Um, I'm actually going to hit mute here because I have to find my cell phone, which is go. I'm not. So Mandy, please start my, my dear friend. Okay. Aloha. How is everyone? Hi. Um, awesome. Everybody can hear me okay, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Um, I always start with a, I think, a target species for everybody wanting to come here and enjoy the wildlife and the bird life, which is the EEV you see um, on the screen. Everybody can see the screen I'm sharing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's see. 
wake up my computer. So the EEV is in our honey creeper family and I just like to share with you really briefly um, the variety of birds that we once had here amongst the islands. Uh, we had rosy finches coming over from Southeast Asia and at one point had four to 56 species of honey creepers and you can see the EEV here on the screen um, but obviously not everyone pictured here has a bill adapted for feeding nectar from flowers. You can see some of these birds were going after insects and a lot of them going after seeds. Um, but tragically, we're down to less than 16 species of honey creepers. Uh, it's my goal on my three island tour that I've designed to try and get you folks to see all of the endemics in the inhabited islands. Um, and usually we can get close to 20 endemic species, which is kind of crazy that we've lost 95 of them. Um, and I won't harp on doom and gloom and talk to you about all of the birds we've lost. <laughs> I wanna highlight the ones that are still here. Um, but these are just some issues that we have in Hawaii, very similar to New Zealand, if any of you have visited, very isolated groups of islands. The only uh, native terrestrial vertebrate we had other than birds were bats. So um, things like rats and cats, uh, feral pigs, these are all causing issues for whether forest birds, like you can see the rat going for one of my uh, Oahu elapio nests there. Um, pigs ripping up our native plants. The biggest threat to most of our native Hawaiian forest birds is actually avian malaria being spread by mosquitoes. Believe it or not, we didn't even have mosquitoes here in Hawaii. <laughs> Talk about a true paradise, huh? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going through the islands based on the birds. Um, but I will, I will go to the locations first. So when you folks fly in to meet me, you'll be flying into Honolulu here on Oahu. Um, and we basically spend our first day together going up into the Ko'ola Mountains. So we have two um, extinct volcanoes that are still visible, basically making up our mountain ranges here on the island of Oahu. So on the east side, we have the Ko'olau mountain range. And on the west side, we have the Waianae mountain range. And you can see how lush and green and tropical these Ko'olau mountains are. It's pretty crazy for us because as the bird flies from where you'll be staying in Waikiki, right along the edge of Kapiolani Park, it's a big, beautiful park full of birds actually from all over the world. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but as the bird flies, it's not even five and a half miles from the park and Waikiki Beach to go up to the Kola Mountains. Um, actually on a clear day like today, you can actually see the mountains from Waikiki, I'm over in Diamond Head on my lanai on my porch now. But, um, you know, Waikiki gets less than 30 inches of rainfall the whole year. And you can see how lush and green and tropical these Ko'ala mountains are with the landscape here in this photo I got. And they can easily get over 200 inches of rainfall. The university students actually recorded close to 300 inches of rainfall on that mountain range a couple of years ago. So we're literally driving up into the watershed on a windy road. And the first bird we'll be looking for is one of our honey creepers. You can see the Oahu Amakihi here in that down curved bill. Uh, we've tragically lost a lot of honey creepers here on Oahu, but this is definitely one of our target birds for our trips. Um, and remember, we do have Amakihi that are different species across the three islands. So this bird is actually endemic just to the island. Hello? Hello? Hi. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi, it's Dawn at Birth Nature. Yeah, hi Dawn. How are you? Good. 
good. Welcome, uh, so welcome to the call. Man, Mandy's in the middle of the presentation. At the end of October. Um, oh, okay. So I'll get an email or something. If you could unmute, you're, you're interfering a little bit here. We'll go out on, they usually go out like the first of the, uh, the first week of the month that is your ex. Okay. There was a question. I'm not sure. Um, I was listening to see if there was a question. I didn't hear one. Did anyone have a question? Okay, we'll we'll get back to questions in just uh, a few minutes. In, well, probably in about six minutes in its year. Um, go ahead, Mandy. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, no, no worries. Uh, the other endemic bird here on Oahu that uh, will be one of our target birds, and the bird that I always have to work for as your guide is the Oahu elipio, who you can see on the right side of the screen there. And this bird is not in the honey creeper family. This bird is in the monarch flycatcher family. Mm. Any of you have been to um, Indonesia or Australia or New Zealand, you might be a little bit more familiar with the monarchs. Um, so both of these species are really hardy birds. They've adapted to being in non-native forests. Uh, they're very opportunistic with foraging. Um, they've even built up a resistance to the avian malaria, which is very impressive. Um, but rats are still a big problem for the Oahu elipio. You can see that adorable little cup-shaped nest that they make. Um, even high up in the trees, the rats can climb up in a matter of minutes and take eggs and chicks. So we have a population of less than 1,200 Oahu elipio. They are listed as an endangered species. Um, so this is usually a bird that I have to work to find for you folks. Um, but they are, I shouldn't have favorites, but they are my favorite. Um, this is a bird I've worked with here on Oahu, and you can see me there with one of the rat traps. So if we know where the birds are nesting, they are territorial, and I'll actually show you some of the traps that I set up with Pacific Rim when we're out on the trail looking for the birds. Um, but going back to the locations, you can see a big fat monk seal laying there on the beach. Um, our second day on the island will be a casual one if we can get both endemics on our first trip around uh, the Ko'olau Mountains. The second day will be a nice, easy, laid back day. We'll cruise around the north side of the island. You'll get a beautiful overview of the island. I don't just do birding tours. I used to do bus tours and history tours and cultural tours. So I'll be making sure that I give you some geology and some history and some culture as we go around the island not just birding, but also enjoying the sights. Um, if you're here in the springtime with me in May, we should get beautiful looks at red-tailed tropic birds right from a scenic coastal highway. Mm. Um, I have a couple of favorite spots I like to scan for things like monk seals and sea turtles. And the target bird when we get up to the north side of the island is uh, bristle-thighed curlew. Mm. And if any of you have done the schlep in Alaska, I'm happy to tell you that I walk you across a golf course <laughs> to look for this bird. Um, <laughs> I know I see some expressions there like, really? <laughs> Why didn't I do that trip instead? <laughs> um, so here are just some of the other birds. Uh, I think for me, one of my favorites to share with you folks is the, um, the white turn you see there. The Hawaiian name is Manu Oku. Uh, they are native throughout the Pacific, but it's pretty neat to see them nesting in trees amongst skyscrapers and right from your hotel room windows. Hmm. Uh, right here in the busy city with over 700,000 people, they've pretty much introduced themselves and they're doing very well here on Oahu. We've had a population increase from one pair back in 1962, 63 to over 2000 birds today. Yes. Um, very good. Yeah, so this is one I won't have to work for. They'll probably greet you before you even get to meet me in person on your first night here. Um, I've also done some seabird work, but I don't want to get too into my conservation uh, 
work here because then I won't get to show you all of the places uh, that I'm going to be taking you to. Did anyone have questions about a walk going back to these locations? Yeah, so let's take a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, so let's take a little bit of time for Oahu birding questions. Anybody got any Oahu birding questions or even general Hawaiian birding tour questions? I'd like to know about that elapio, I think it was called. Yeah. Uh, what is what is the size of that bird? Because that nest looks almost like a hummingbird nest. I know, and it's it's um they do use spider webs and they cover it with uh, moss and lichen, kind of like um, kind of like if you've ever seen a, a chickadee nest, if you have one inside the nest box in your backyard, it's very similar. Uh, the bird is is bigger than a chickadee. I would say my best. North American or mainland U.S. comparison for an elapio would be a uh, Carolina wren. Oh, okay. Thank you. A little chunkier passerine, and uh, that's basically what I'll be telling you to look for in the forest is somebody with that tail up between the wings, sitting very similar and posturing very much like a wren. And uh, I think the field marks no matter which elapio species we're looking for, other than that erect tail through the wings are gonna be the white wing bars. Mm -hmm. And they are dimorphic. The males have a, a darker throat patch once they're sexually mature at about two, three years old. And the females have more white underneath the chin. Good, good, good question. Any, any other questions out there at all? I, 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 I just wanted to, uh, uh, I spent quite a bit of time in Johnson Atoll and those white terns are absolutely incredible. And they, they, they lay an egg in the most ridiculous places. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, the, the rail of a railing you know, or in a, a tree branch, and these little chicks just stand there and you go right up to them and they, uh, uh, they just stand there. They, they're there and they don't move until they're fledged. And it's, uh, it's just incredible watching them. They are, they're adorable. And uh, you can see the chick here with the parent, they do actually go out and bring back whole fish or whole little squid, and the baby will eat the fish whole. Um, it, it, it almost reminds me of uh, something like a puffin, you know, coming back with a bill full of, of fish. And I've done pelagics and I've been over 32 miles offshore, and I still see white terns flying around. It's it, They're really, really amazing. Birds. But yeah, the chicks are quite adorable, and I'm sure no matter what time of year you're here, I'll have a, a cute fuzzy chick staked out on a low branch for you to photograph. <laughs> um, hey, Mandy, you raised something about um, buses, and I know these are not bus tours, so let's be clear about that. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> our, tours, our tours are usually a maximum, It's is it seven or eight people? I know you I like to max out at seven in my tour van. It's a 12 passenger van that I use here on Oahu that's mine. And this way everybody can know. Yeah, so we do max out our Hawaii groups at set, at set heaven. On all PIB tours, we generally don't do more than eight, but on Hawaii, just Mandy likes, there's a couple places we gotta use two vehicles, so it's better to do set heaven. Um, but to be clear, we do not use buses. We use like a large 12 seat heater van with, lug <laughs> Excuse me, with luggage room in the back. Um, any other questions out there on Hawaii bird birding or Oahu? We'll, we'll take about one more if, if it's out, out there. Okay, I think we're, we're jumping on to Hawaii. On Kauai, um, well, let me backtrack, excuse me. I usually uh, like to take a late morning flight from Honolulu here on Oahu over to Lihui on Kauai. Um, 
it gives us time to enjoy a leisurely breakfast, not rush through the traffic. I don't know if anyone's been through Honolulu at rush hour. It's not fun. <laughs> yes, <sir>. um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but when we land on uh, Kauai, we're able to drop off personal belongings at our hotel. And then what we'll do is we'll make our way up to the north side of Kauai. And there's two prime locations. I featured one here in, the, in this uh, slide. On the right-hand side, you can see Kilauea Point uh, Lighthouse, and it's a national wildlife refuge. And um, this is an amazing place for seabirds. Uh, it really doesn't matter what time of the year you visit the lighthouse. I never say you're guaranteed to see anything, but I would surprised if you missed a white-tailed tropic bird, red-footed booby, great frigate bird, brown booby. Um, if you come in the springtime or the wintertime, we have laysan in the neighborhoods and along the golf courses right on the north side of the island. So I know for a lot of people, they've told me, oh, I've got my laysan albatross off the coast of California on a pelagic. Well, it's something very different to see one doing courtship displays in someone's front yard on Hawaii. So, um, you know, this is just truly a magical place. And I've had some really awesome birds. Uh, Red-tailed tropic birds, again, are winter and spring. But um, in the fall, we actually have had Kermadec petrels flying around harassing our red-footed booby colonies. Which, which, uh, which pet, petrel species was that? Kermadec. And there we go. Yeah, it's a really neat bird. Um, Pacific Rim Conservation has live cams out on the property and we have two wandering around right now calling back and forth to each other that fingers crossed might actually be nesting. Um, so some really neat bird activity. Uh, continuing up around the north side of the island, our first day on Kauai, we'll leave the lighthouse and we'll go up to a place called Hanalei National Wildlife Refuge. And this is where we're going to finally get to see a pure Hawaiian duck. Most of the mallards on the other islands have hybridized with Hawaiian duck. We brought in domestic mallards. We get very few migrant uh, wild mallard, but our Hawaiian duck um, has actually been looked at quite closely on Hanalei National Wildlife Refuge. This is also where you're gonna see your first nene, our Hawaiian goose. Um, up around the lighthouse in Hanalei National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, Hawaiian coot. We have our own endemic subspecies of gallinule and black neck stilt, which might actually be separated out at its own species at some point. Um, and our second day on Kauai uh, is one of my favorite days on the tour. We go into a place called Koke'e State Park and on our way into the park, we stop at this gorgeous overlook of uh, Waimea Canyon. And you can see that there on the left. Uh, this place is also called the uh, Grand Canyon of the Pacific. And again, we'll be starting in a fairly dry area and we'll be traveling on the southeastern side of the island and winding up around to the southwestern of the island to drive into the park and um, this is where we're going to be looking for our forest birds on the island. Uh, it can actually get a little bit chilly once you get up into Koke A State Park. Uh, we will be birding in an area that is probably around 4,000 feet above sea level and we'll be on the edge of the Alakai Swamp and it's known as one of the wettest places on earth. So this will be the day I will be reminding all of you <laughs> to uh, make sure you've got your, your rain gear, not just for you, but also for your camera or whatever else you'd like to take in with you into the forest. Um, but some of the um, endemic birds we'll be looking for are here. 
you can see the Hawaii Amakihi, the uh, Anianiao, and the Kauai Elapayo. And these are the birds we're going to be focusing on trying to find in Koke'e State Park. The bottom three there are critically endangered species. I don't think any of you want to do an eight to 10 mile slog of steep cliff faces to try and find one of the last 400 Akakiki. Um, but there are still some native birds to find in uh, accessible areas in the park that'll be safer for us to check around and look for. So you can see the differences with the Amakihi and the Elopayo on, on Kauai than Oahu that I was showing you. Right. And that little Ani Aniao in the top left hand corner this is a teeny tiny little bird, basically fills the niche of the warblers that never made it here. Very, very small, dainty curved bill. They're going to be gleaning insects from the leaves and the flowers on our native trees. Trees like Ohia Lehua with the red blossoms and Koa is another one of our main canopy tree species. Um, so this will definitely, I'm sure, be one of the highlights of the trip, getting to see why Canyon. Hopefully we'll get good views. Sometimes you're just up there in the clouds. Um, and more introduced bird you might not be expecting to see in Hawaii. Ava Devat, Meadowlark, we have Laughing Thrush, um, but you can see the Hawaiian duck there and the Hawaiian goose I mentioned. There's white-tailed tropic birds flying through Waimea Canyon almost all times of the day, every day of the year. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful bird. You think the scenery is beyond stunning, jaw-dropping, and you, you look up and there's tropic birds swirling around on top of it. Uh, it really is just a spectacular place to visit. Um, and we'll be up there early before the rest of the visitors, I'm sure the majority of them don't even get to the park until after 10 o'clock in the morning, so. Um, usually just birding right off the road and on some of the easier trails, we're able to get the endemics that are left. Um, see if I have any more Kauai photos I wanted to share with you guys. These are more conservation projects that I'm involved with. Uh, Kauai Forest Recovery Project and also um, this Nihoku Ecosystem Restoration Project is part of Pacific Rim. And uh, basically what they're doing is moving Hawaiian petrel and Newell shearwater down off of the mountains where we have feral cats and rats predating our seabirds. You can see the little makeshift burrows in the photo. We're actually moving chicks to an area next to the lighthouse where we've installed a predator proof fence very thin wire mesh so none of the rodents can squeeze through. Nobody can crawl or dig underneath it and it's got an awning on top of it so nothing can crawl up over and around. Whether it be a rat or a cat. On the other islands we have issues with mongoose that have been introduced. Uh, so basically creating a safe haven for the seabirds and the really good news about this project is that um, most seabirds instinctively return to the place where they fled from. And this season, it was five years since we translocated our first group of chicks and we had three Hawaiian petrels return. Mm. It's been a very successful project. So this is a conservation success story I wanted to share with all of you that I was involved with. Um, but I'll leave it open to any questions about Kauai whether it be seabirds or water birds or forest birds. Any, any quest, questions out there, folks, on uh, Kauai? I've been saying Kauai, but it's Kauai. It's like Kauai, but it's Kauai. Kauai. Yeah. And, 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 and by the way, uh, Mandy and I did a video conference, which is up on the, on the WWPI bird dot com website on on pronouncing Hawaiian bird names. 
which I think will be a handy um, device before anybody goes to Hawaii to learn, you know, just to learn to pronounce a couple bird names. And it's truly, it's not that difficult. I am a horrible linguist. And Mandy coached me through, oh golly, I mean a lot more species than I would have thought. I think we got through about 18 or 12. So um, if you have a chance, you can check that out. Uh, any any questions about Kauai bird birding? I have a question coming through about this red avidavat. The other yeah. for this bird, um, it was also commonly known as strawberry finch. Mm. And they are in the Estrilid or Finch family. Mm. Obviously not native, more beautiful, adorable little cage birds who escaped probably. Great. Arturo, any other questions out there coming in by text? Yeah, I had a quick one. The, white -tailed she... tropic, the red tail tropic bird I know, uh, nest on the ground. As the, does uh, the white tail tropic bird do the same thing? Yes, so there are some differences between the two species in Hawaii. The white tailed tropic birds here are residents, they're actually here year round. Whereas the red tailed tropic birds on Kauai usually arrive uh, mid to late January uh, to nest. And we have them on Oahu nesting. I think I see them usually through July. Um, and some stragglers, red, this is red tailed tropic bird I'm talking about. I've seen on Kauai through September. So really the only time I, I don't normally see red-tailed tropic birds would probably be into uh, November, December, beginning of January. Um, but yeah, they, I think the red-tailed are a little bit more um, pelagic here around the Hawaiian Islands, whereas the white-tailed are their residents. So if you know where they're hanging out, they're, they're here year-round. Uh, and, and Waimea Canyon, uh, bordering Koke'e State Park on Kauai is definitely a place to go look for them. Great. Hey, and um, while we're on the tropic bird story, I mean questions, um, truly, I mean, this is one of my favorite Mandy stories, and I'm going to let her illuminate on, on it a little bit. There was one tour, she got three tropic bird species like within like a minutes. 60 minute time frame, right? Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, she was with photographers who just, like, they barely cared. But, <laughs> 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 but, but truly, the, you know, the sort of long lost, I mean, the difficult to get in the ABA area bird, the tropic birds are fairly easy to get in Hawaii. And on the typical tour, you easily get white tailed tropic bird and red tailed tropic bird, right? Correct. So the, the red build is definitely a vagrant here, uh, but we've had probably the same individual or two individuals coming back to Oahu who's obviously confused and trying to be a red-tailed tropic bird hanging out <laughs> next to that colony. And, uh, you know, I saw reports of the bird and it was something that I was looking for, not expecting that I would get all three species in a matter of 15 or 20 minutes. Um, but that was definitely one of my uh, Hawaii highlight birding experiences to get all three tropic birds without moving. <laughs> <laughs> and, and truly you saw all three in like under 15 minutes more than in 30 or? I about mean, how, how on Oahu, we don't see many white-tailed tropic birds. They're much more mm -hmm. common over on the Hilo side of the big island in Volcano National Park and over on Kauai in the canyon and up at the lighthouse. But I had a white-tailed flyby fairly close. There's red tails swarming around because they're doing courtship displays, getting ready to breed. And out of nowhere, this red build flew right over us. And yeah, you know, we were literally <laughs> standing off of the highway bird watching. Yeah. So true early, my friends, you will not miss uh, white tail and red tail tropic bird. If you get lucky, 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 you'll get red, red build. Um, and, and truly, the unfortunate thing about that tour was um, it was a private tour with two photographers, and she 
couldn't get them to look up at the red bill tropic bird. They were just taking pictures and there you go. And um, as a note, photographers are very welcome on our tours. 80% um, of all of our guests carry cameras. Um, it is a birding tour. We are focused on seeing birds, but uh, there's plenty of photographic opportunities in Hawaii, given our target bird list is not that huge. Um, fifth, 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 50 species over, over 10, 10 days. Um, any other questions out there, folks? All right, on to the big island, I suspect. Yeah. So on the big islands, we actually have remnants of uh, five volcanoes. This is uh, by far the biggest of the islands with the most diversity as far as bird life goes, especially when we're on seeing endemics. Uh, the uh, endemic forest birds here on the big island. Uh, let me give you an idea of where we are and then I'll go back to my bird pictures here. If any of you are familiar with Mauna Kea on the Big Island? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, Mauna Kea actually translates as White Mountain. This mountain, what's left of it that's visible on the island is probably less than one eighth of what's underneath the ocean surface. But in January and February and March, we usually have snow on top of this mountain. That's how high it is. Uh, so we basically spend our first two full days exploring the dry side and the wet side. So the dry side is the leeward side. And in Hawaii, our children come from the Northeast. So usually that eastern side of the island is going to be the wet side and the west side is usually the leeward side. So we're going to spend our first day on the big island exploring the dry forest on the leeward side of Mauna Kea. And we're going to be looking for the palila. So if you look at the top row of birds photographed there, you can see the palila has almost like a gross beak bill. And that's because over 90% of their diet in this dry forest on the dry side of Mauna Kea, the side of the mountain, is a plant called mamane. And that bill is designed, or I should say adapted, to crack open these huge seed pods. The other really interesting thing that I learned about the mamane is if we were to take a handful of those seeds and eat them and ingest them ourselves, it would actually be poisonous to us. Um, so the other neat thing is these birds have truly adapted to feeding on basically a, a poisonous seed. And of course, mamane is an endemic just like a lot of the plants up there. Uh, sandalwood, we have an endemic sandalwood that have, would have been the uh, canopy tree species. If any of you are into plants, um, the other dominant species up there would be something called willy willy. Um, and I'll be showing you all of the endemic plants and flowers I can find as well. Uh, that's the fun thing about Hawaii, whether you're a naturalist, a nature lover, uh, a botanist, you know, we don't have a lot of birds like Charles was saying, so it does allow <laughs> to enjoy the landscape and the plants and everything else there, or the photography. It, we're not so rushed as birding. We can really enjoy where we are. Um, so yeah, that will be, that day will be focused on finding you folks a palila. And um, again, I'm doing most of my guiding or locating birds by ear. And I can't use the, uh, the tape, the playback. Most of these birds are endangered species, right? So I'm just walking around with you trying to listen to locate where they are. But even the drive, the journey to get you to the leeward side of Mauna Kea from where we're staying down in Kona along the coast is quite an adventure. Um, we usually get beautiful looks at the pueo, which is the Hawaiian short-eared owl. 
So those of you into photography, I've had many people tell me that the best photos they've ever gotten of short-eared owl were on that drive on Saddle Road, driving to the leeward side of Mauna Kea. Uh, we also encounter a lot of introduced game birds, things like Urkel's Franklin, Black Franklin, uh, Kalij Pheasant, even Indian Peafowl is an ABA tick now <laughs> here in Hawaii. Um, our second day, we'll be going over to the uh, windward side, over to the wet side. Maybe, maybe can, can we just take a little break? Um, sure. Because Hakalau, I think, is going to deserve a lot of questions. It's, it's such a fine wooden location in Hawaii. Um, so you actually said something pretty funny from my point of view. <laughs> you said there's not a lot of birds on the tour. I mean, if you're an ABA area lister, like Hawaii's a dream. You're going to add close to 50, maybe 55 species, something in the fit iftiest range. Um, in the ABA area. So even compared to Alaska, which is a pretty birdy place from an ABA standard, like Hawaii is actually a bit better. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and, and believe it or not, we had a question back on Kauai, um, and it was on the Lazen Albatross col colony. It's really two birds, correct? The one off the golf course? That question, it's about Laysan albatross, not just on Kauai, but on Oahu. And the oh, answer to that question is yes, there is a Laysan albatross colony on Oahu. Um, we will not be doing a six mile hike to go see a Laysan albatross on Oahu because when we get to Kauai, I can drive you to a nesting Laysan albatross. So the good news is you will see, you have to the other piece of good news is you won't be, is it six miles one way? No, it's six miles round trip and it's in full sun along the coast. Sure. It can be enjoyable if you get there early enough and you're up for the mud and you bring enough water with you, but I don't think for a multi-island tour it's worth anyone's time to do a trek like that when there's so much more accessible on Kauai. But Sometimes we do see Laysan albatross when we're walking the golf course for our bristle-thighed curlew. Right. And, um, and, and, you know, quite frankly, we could sort of make an extension for that fairly easily. Um, so we can talk about that. And we will talk more about extensions, pre-tours, and post-tours after the end of the thing. Any, any other questions on the big island so far? I have a question on this slide. Uh, the Hawaii Akipa, I think it's pronounced, I don't know. Yes. It says less than, was it 10,000 or 1,000? 10,000. 10,000, okay. I got that typo and I should have fixed it. No, I, I'm sorry, but I, I just, I was curious because I thought 1,000 birds was very, very small. So 10,000. Yeah. Big, but, Quite but frankly, thanks. there's so many really near. I mean, there's so many bird populations in Hawaii that are under 2,000 species. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, when I see any bird species get below 2,000, it just doesn't take much, and they could be headed towards extinction. So um, it's a good time to go out and see these birds, but more importantly, we just need to support the bird conservation in Hawaii, which is really difficult because of the, uh, the power of development. Um, but Hakala is really the exception to the rule. So let's talk about Hakala National Wildlife Ref Refuge. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to say that although all of our native bird populations are dwindling, and I'm talking endemics, even my little Oahu Elapayo, I was talking about my favorite bird. I mean, that's a population that's also less than 1,200 individuals. Um, the good news is there are a lot of conservation groups and a lot of management programs that we can to save what's left. You saw me volunteering and working for quite a few of uh, the bird conservation focused nonprofits here in the islands. But Hakalau is a place where we have native bird populations increasing. 
And this is the only place I know of within any of the Hawaiian Islands where every year we have more and more birds. And there are several reasons for that. Um, one is because of the elevation on Mauna Kea. In Hawaii, I mentioned that avian malaria being spread by introduced mosquitoes has become a serious threat to our native forest birds. Most of the birds like the EEB pictured here do not have any immunity to avian malaria. So say the mos this Kulix mosquito uh, takes a bite from a yellow-billed cardinal on the Big Island. If they're carrying avian malaria and that same mosquito bites one of our precious little EEV. As an endemic and a native, uh, they're very isolated here. They don't have any immunity to avian malaria. And I don't, I think even in lab experiments, we've never had an EEV last more than seven to 10 days after a bite and getting avian malaria. So Hakalo is truly a place of refuge for these birds because the entrance to the park is 6,800 feet above sea level. So basically you're above the mosquito line. Here in the islands, if you can get above 5,000 feet above sea level, you can get above where those mosquitoes are breeding. So that is why on islands like Oahu, I was saying we have basically got three endemic forest birds. I, I highlighted the two, the Amakihi and the Alapayo, as having an immunity to the disease because if they didn't have an immunity, they wouldn't be able to escape mosquitoes. Our highest elevation on Oahu is just 4,000 feet above sea level. Unfortunately, Kauai is the same. That's why I mentioned some of those bird populations are less than 400 individuals. Um, but the good news is on the Big Island, we have much more elevation. And in places like Hakalau, which is close to the public, um, you're getting access to the refuge uh, through me as a, as a licensed commercial tour operator who's literally been vetted to get a permit to take people in here. We've got a lot of programs with reforesting with endemic and very rare and endangered plant. Um, you can see the EEV feeding from a lobeliate or a cyania there. We actually have over 127 endemic species of that one family of flowering plant as well. Uh, there are some in Hakalau that are literally nowhere else in the entire world. I'll definitely be highlighting uh, not just the birds, but the plants in the park. But because you're above where the mosquitoes are, we're doing everything we can conservation-wise to promote bringing back a lot of rare and endangered plants. The birds in the refuge are really thriving. And to get back at which birds I'm talking about, uh, let me go back to my bird photos, my screen. Here we go. So uh, somebody asked me about the uh, Kepa population. You can see that male there is a beautiful day glow orange. They're actually dimorphic. The females are yellow. I mentioned, we talked about the Palila being in the drag forest. You can see finally a raptor on the screen. The Hawaiian hawk breeds on the wet side or the windward side of Mauna Kea. I usually am able to spot one or two in Hakalau National Wildlife Refuge. The Hawaii creeper is the bottom left-hand corner. You can see these guys fill the niche of a, uh, a nut hatch or a, uh, a creeper here in Hawaii. Um, there's a thrush photograph there. Can you folks all see that oma'o? Yep. The from Townsend Solitaire. Um, we had five species of thrushes. This is really one of two we have left, and the other one is so endangered on Kauai. Your best bet at seeing an endemic thrush is this bird right here, the oma'o. They feed on a lot of the native berries. We have an endemic raspberry and an endemic blueberry that these birds love, the akala and ohelo. And um, 
the holy grail, I call it of Hakalau, is the bird up in the uh, top left hand corner. The Aki Apolau. Uh, we say Aki for short if you can't spit all that out, but um, you can see the bill on this bird and it's a really neat bird. This bird fills the niche of a woodpecker. <coughs> They actually will tap along the trunk or a big thick branch with the lower mandible and that long upper mandible. <coughs> they find a larva underneath the bark. They'll actually twist and make a hole with the lower mandible and bring the upper mandible in like a big long fingernail and pull it out. They can even bring both mandibles together like tweezers. And uh, I mean, that's a bird that's probably only around 800 individuals. So that Akiapo'olau, that Alavi or Hawaii creeper in the bottom left-hand corner, and that day glow orange Akepa, those are the three critically endangered birds that I'm going to be working really hard to find for you in Hakalau. I'm happy to say that the EEV will probably be dripping from the treetops on those ohia blossoms in the forest. Uh, I will actually have to turn your attention away from the EEV if I find one of the rare birds here, which is usually hard for us to do as bird watchers when we finally lay eyes on one. Um, but like I said, uh, in Hakalau, just in the few years I've been able to access the park on my own permit, I've seen the bird populations increase. Some of these birds are very territorial. We now have uh, five Akiapo'olau territories that we can venture through and look for one of these birds. So I remember first going into the park and there were barely three less than six years ago. So. Okie dokie. Um... We're probably going to head towards wrap up here. Um, I maybe we'll have time to talk about strategic birding. We may save that just for another other day, um, and we may just touch on it briefly. I actually have five or six questions, but um, any any questions for the group? Yeah, I had a quick one. Um, do you have uh, sooty terns on um, on the Hawaiian Islands? So the sooty terns are nesting on the Hawaiian islands. The islands with the majority of the population, we do not have sooty terns nesting, but here off of Oahu, we have some very small, um, basically rocks, really, really small islands offshore. Uh, the one in particular I'm thinking of is called Manana Island. A lot of the locals call it Rabbit Island. It's off the southeastern shore of Oahu. And that island in February, beginning of March, has about 20,000 sooty terns nesting on it. Wow. When you look at the island with your binoculars that time of year, you basically yeah. just see plowed thousands of sooty terns. Great. Hey, I'm just going to take a couple administrative breaks. Some are rather important and worth your ears. So I'll start with the most intriguing one. We've never done this on a video conference before, but we're going to offer $100 off any of our Hawaiian bird tours in 2021 or 2022. And I don't know that Mandy and I have 2022 dates up, but if you call me and let me know that you want to do a 2022 Hawaii birding trip, we will give you $100 off that price. Um, and there will probably be a couple hundred dollar inflation between 2021 and 2022. Um, sorry to get Gabby here. I, I, I am an economist, so I get, I get very mouthy on numbers. But, um, but yeah, call I'll meet any time in October 2020 to book a tour in 2021 or 2022, and we'll get you taken care of. Um, and on all of our tours, I, I think on Hawaii, we can go about, I don't know, 60, 90, 90 days before the tour. If it's safe to travel there, we will continue with the tour. If it's unsafe because of the pandemic, we will postpone the tour for a year. Um, hopefully, we'll get out of this uh, postponement loop here <laughs> sometime March, April, May, June. 
Um, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping. I think we all are. I know we're anxious to get out there bird watching. But again, if you call, call, call me, my phone number is 720-320-1974. If you call on me and book one of those tours, we'll, we'll give you a hundred bucks off. You can also e email me and ask for a call. And my email is charles at pibird.com. There are more details about our Hawaiian birding tours on our website at www.pibird.com. Um, here's a handy, I don't know if you can show my screen, Arturo, um, a handy, I can just tell people what, what it is. There is a field guide to the birds of Hawaii um, that has come out in the last six months. You can get it on Amazon or from the people who published it at the American Birding Association. Nice job, Mandy. Um, and there we go. And we do like to plug our friends at the American Birding Association because they are good eggs. Um, uh, oh, the most, the key administrative thing. Um, a couple of you, I don't think I've mentioned your, your first and last name, maybe your first name, but if there's any element of the video that you want taken off because your personal identifier is out there, please write operations at pibird.com, operations at pibird.com, and Arturo will get you, um, we'll edit that out of the video, um, which we do share on Facebook and we do share on our website. Um, truly, we've never had to do two videos on our website before, but we'll have one on Hawaiian bird pronunciations and the other one on um, this, this very presentation. Um, any other questions out there? How far is it from the forest to uh, Kona? How far is Kona from? Uh, ha Hakalau. Oh, good question. So it takes a good hour and a half to get to the dirt road that I will be off-roading on to get you to Hakalau. And I usually take a good 45 minutes on the dirt road. So it's a drive. Yeah, so that's two hours and 15 minutes total. What's on the dirt road? Do, do you take birding stops or do you just bear through it? If we get good looks at Kalij Pheasant, we definitely stop. Uh, the vehicles act as a good uh, blind for game birds. Uh, other game birds you could see would be California quail. Uh, Urkel's Franklin, uh, Black Franklin, Gray Franklin, uh, Ring-necked Pheasant. So, but I do make a stop at the state park about halfway there with uh, clean bathrooms and flushing toilets because obviously there are no flushing toilets once we get into Hakalau. Just an outhouse with a beautiful view. Right. Hey, and um, you did raise bird species a bit. Um, total total and MX on the tour is usually, I forget the number, my friend. I have it here. It's about 20 if I do good. <laughs> right. So, so about 20 and MX species. And then um, how many introduced species on the tour that are ABA countable? Um, everybody with the exception of three or four of the 85 to 95 birds that you will see in Hawaii are ABA ticks. Right. And so, and so total species does get close to 50 with, with the pelagic, right? Yes. Um, we didn't really talk about the pelagic. I ran out of time rambling about Hakalau, which Chuck warned me about, but the last day mm -hmm. is the pelagic trip. Kona is a nice, calm place to go out, and you know we usually get a dozen to fifteen birds at the right time of the year. Uh, we can get migrant birds going back to and from New Zealand and some of the offshore islands, even as far away as off of South America. So, um, I just had a Cook's petrol a couple of days ago out on a fishing trip with a friend. So. Well, there you go. We had Juan, Juan, was it Juan Fernandez's storm petrol? Juan Fernandez, yeah, Juan Fernandez petrol was actually the default on my pelagic with my PI bird trip this past uh, February. You know, February, March, yeah. 
Um, doesn't that seem like a long time ago, pre pre pandemic? It seems yeah. like it's just not that long ago, but it seems like forever ago. Um, and there we go. Um, so, oh yeah, extensions and pre pre tours. Let me cover a little bit of that. So, a lot of people want to see Pearl Harbor. Um, we do start the tour in Oahu. Um, I'm actually a big national park buff, so I think if you just come in a day in advance and drive over to Pearl Har Har Harbor and use the nice interpretive information there, that meets most people's needs. However, if you do want a formal tour guide for that, there are plenty that we can sort out. Um, the other jewel at the end of the tour is Volcano National Park. And some people try to squeeze it in before they get to the airport. It's just not worth it because it's a several hour drive away um, <coughs> from, um, remind me of that city, Mandy. Is it a Wahoo? Uh, or is it Kona to Volcano National Park. It's almost two and a half hours and Volcano National Park is <coughs> You could easily spend 45 minutes once you get into the park just driving to where you want to go. Yeah, so if you're going to add time at, Vol is it Volcanoes National Park, plural? Right. Volcanoes National Park. Um, we do recommend you just add a day and either rent a car or, again, if you would like to hire <laughs> a guy, you can sort that out. And then in terms of, you know, the birding met Egas on Hawaii, um, they do take quite a bit of work as Mandy implied, um, and you can dip on them. But again, if you want to hire Mandy for an extra day to get those two, one or two speed ECs, please let Edis know. We can sort that out as well. We, we, remind me of those two speed Mandy. Mandy, remind me of those two species names of those two tough, tough birds. Um, on the big island? Um, all I know is that they're they're like basically require a full day walk extension. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think. Um, most people aren't as concerned about trying to see lavender waxbill or red mast parakeet, yeah, yeah. even though they've been accepted on our checklist through our bird committee here, and they're on the AOS list. They have not made the ABA list yet, so. Gotcha. Hey, and um, I think Mandy missed my question, and that's okay. But um, we're just going to take another two or three minutes before we do final wrap up. Um, we did have a question about the Pelagic tour. Um, the P the Pelagic tour, we, we we do have a nine day tour, and then we have the ten day tour. The ten day tour does include a Pelagic boat trip out of Kona, correct? Kona at the end of the tour. Um, so if you also get there and you're just too fried and don't want to do the boat trip, we can sort that out. But crowd, but most people really do want to do the boat trip. And it's not brutal, horrible. It's actually pretty decent. It's, it's just not cold, <coughs> it's not rough. It's a nice, warm, actually it can get hot on the boat. And Kona is like a giant pond. You're on the leeward side of Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, which are massive volcanoes over 10,000 feet above sea level. You're not going to hit trade winds going out. Of Kona. Not until we're over 20 miles offshore. Yeah. Um, so, um, so our 10-day tour does include the Pelagic tour. Um, do, do learn more at our website at www.pibird.com. Um, any other questions before we wrap it up? Uh, just a thumbnail for uh, our flight for Mandy. I'll send you a separate email. I don't want to take up people's time on this. But if we do go to Kauai, I'd like to get some uh, photographs of the albatross. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Not an issue. Um, all righty, my friends. Um, do give us an e email at charles at pibird.com and we truly appreciate the questions. Uh, any other final questions before we sign off? Hearing none, a big thank you to Mandy to help us. Thank you very much, ma'am. Nice presentation. Thank you for the participation today. A lot of good questions. Thank you, participants. 
Um, do check out our tours on our website. We'd love to get you on board. Post pandemic, as I like to say, hopefully I won't have to be saying that in six months, we'll see. Um, okay, my dear friends, um, thank you very much. Thank you.